Okay, first let's set up a material for our letters here. So I'm going to select the A, it doesn't really matter, it's arbitrary at this point, and over to the materials, new, I'm going to call it gold. And to signify that as gold, I'm just going to go like that and give it a base color. And now if we switch on over to our, our material view here, we can see we have gold. Actually, let's switch straight on over to EV, making sure that render engine here is set to EV. And we want to select all of our other text elements, select all, with the one we have just set up a material for selected last, and then go Control L and link materials. So they're all gold, but they're not looking very gold as of yet. So let's change this tool panel here from graph to shader editor. I'm going to hit N on the keyboard to hide this panel. And let's crank up metallic, fully metallic. Let's crank down roughness a bit. And the first thing I'm going to add is an area light just so we can see the gold effect beginning to appear and switch off our overlays here. So, light area, just snapping to the side view there by holding control and middle click. Rotate the light, let's bring it out. Ooh, damn, it's looking nice already. Scale that up, scale it wider. And adjust the power a lot. Okay, cool. It's nice the way it's sort of catching here on the bevels and stuff as well. And the first little adjustment we want to do with our material is break up the roughness. Um, this adds quite a lot quite quickly. So to do that, we're going to use a Musgrave texture. Again, Shift A as you would do the, for the adding objects and other things in the viewport. And I'm going to go search Musgrave procedural texture. Now, making sure we have, I'm sure you do, but just in case, Node Wrangler installed. Uh, not installed, it comes as default, but checked in the add-ons option here so that you can do this kind of thing. So when you select the node, if you uh, select the Musgrave texture, Control Shift, click, and we can see what we're actually doing. So I'm gonna scale this down and I don't like the fact that that all looks similar. So what we're going to do is select all of our objects. Again, moving the light out, it's not part of our text here. And I'm just gonna go through and apply the solidify first. Apply, apply, just so we can properly set up the coordinates. Uh, faster way to do that, if you have loads of stuff, would be to join everything together with Control J and then separate it out again. And select objects here and go into edit mode, select all, hit UV and go to smart project. And just the, the default's fine. And now we can hit Control T on our Musgrave and use the UV instead. So now we can have a, you know, a more global type look without actually shifting around the global coordinates too much. And for our input settings here, again, we can adjust scale by eye, but for details, I'm going to crank it through the roof. And for dimensions, going to start bringing it down so we get this kind of cool mottled effect. And between that, we want to add a map range and turn the minimum into the minus so we get this kind of look and if we plug that into our roughness and then control shift click our principal node we can see we've kind of got this sort of roughness and we can refine in and tweak a little bit more let's just tweak our gold color a bit that looks good. I'm going to duplicate this light as well, just so we have a bit more of a highlight going on. Scale it down, scale it out along the X again.
Yeah, that's nice. So it catches it a bit more. And, you know, we could spend a while tweaking these materials, but you get the general idea. That's kind of, you know, I'm happy with that. And let's give a little preview. And yeah, immediately comes out the, the view there. So I'm just going to move these back a little bit. Look, that isn't too dependent on the lights being very close, but if it is, you know, it doesn't matter too much. Okay, cool. Now let's give it the edges of our text a little love. Uh, and when I say a little love, I mean um, <laughs> not that by we're going to ding them up. We're going to sort of add some roughness to them. And so we need a kind of an edge shader. Now you can't really use pointiness, which is the way to go, which is based on the geometry node here. If we load that up. Normally with cycles, you'd be able to use this point in a setting, which is kind of kind of functions as like a nice little edge shader immediately. But instead of that, we're going to use bevel. So control shift click, see what we've got going on here. We also want a vector maths node. And I think if we subtract this from our normals, Yeah, we kind of get, let's just try true normals. Yeah, we get a kind of faux edge shader here. And if we plug that into a color ramp. Yeah, we can use that as a mask. Cool, but that's looking a little bit, you know, synthetic, I guess would be the word. So let us multiply that effect by using a math node, multiply, and let's just add some noise. Let's just see what that noise looks like. Maybe we need to add a color ramp in between that too. So I'm just going to duplicate this color ramp give a bit more contrast to the noise pattern here. I'm going to use our UV coordinates and play around with the scale. Cool. Now it's a little bit, yes, a little bit less uniform. Okay. So that, that is in effect our mask here. So let's, get our principal material, hook it back up again, duplicate it. Let's turn it to something like a sort of silvery metallic. And let's load up a mix shader. Plug those two in and use our mask as the factor. Okay, it's not quite as strong as I had hoped. So we're going to add one more math vector. Well, we can duplicate this one, put it in between these two and change it to length. Might need to reconnect these up again. Okay, that's a bit better. Nice. And the other thing we can do is use our noise texture as a bump by adding a bump, plugging it into the normal. I mean, the strength we can turn chug, chug, chug way down and use that as our height. Cool. Sort of breaks up the edge a little nice. Okay, cool. Let's remind ourselves of the motion. Ooh, nice. I think we can actually take advantage of the, um, the 3D-ness a little bit more by rotating uh, everything, tilting everything back a little bit. So if we go in back into our graph editor, Choose our rotation. Let's go with Y rotation. And if we hit G and Y, we can just tilt everything back. Yeah, that looks cool. Now let's just adapt our lighting a little bit. Now, while we're at it, we can use this very wide area light to add a cool sheen when it forms. 
So if we duplicate our area light here, we're going to rotate it like that. So now you can see we, add a, we can add a cool sheen, but we're going to pump this up more. So let's go to like 500. Sheen, nice. So let's start it over here. Commit with a key, eye on the keyboard. And so it comes and forms. A sheen happens by hitting G and X, moving it across. If you don't have auto key engaged, to eye on the keyboard again. So it forms and then explodes off. Now we need to adjust our environment uh, material as well a little bit. So we go to our shader editor and then switch from object to world. We've got uh, gray in here. So maybe we need to turn that down a smidge. And sort of when it, when it goes off into the background as well, it's a bit boring, so I'm just going to duplicate this area light, scale it way up, and give it a bit more. Let's move it back to so it captures everything. While we're at it, let's duplicate this at another the other area light, rotate it so we can get some nice backlight going on. We're going to change this to a cool sort of aqua type color. It is Fishzilla after all. Okay, and it's looking good. Right. Uh, in EV, let's just switch on bloom and ambient occlusion. Ooh, looking very nice, looking super 80s. Well, reasonably happy with that. Now let's set up a background. Um, again, the cursor is in the center here. Let us add just a plane. And we're going to rotate it X 90 degrees again. Scale it up quite a bit. Grab it, move it way back. Scale it up even more. And this will be our background. So let's go give this new material, call it background or BG if you're lazy. Move it out of our text. Uh, I think it keeps dropping in there because I have the collection highlighted. So I won't do that in future. And we're going to go for an aqua sort of green type look. And a tiny bit of a radial fall off as well. So let's give it some emission. But let's uh, restrict that with a gradient fall off. From linear to spherical, factor into our strength. You kind of see what that is happening there. So if we switch over here, we should be able to see that too. Yep, so it's coming here in the bottom left-hand corner. So let's control T, get a texture mapping node up, switch type to texture, and location, I think we just do 0.5 everything, except for Z maybe, and scale. Yeah, tweak the scale, I guess, to your heart's content. And the output, if we look at that, looks a bit like that. Okay, th those are the settings, basically, uh, to, give, to keep it nice and central in a flat plane. But what would be nice as well is just to throw a gamma node in between those so we can make it a lot softer. Okay, next stop is the volumetric effects.